Let's to give them a warm, pop. huge yes. Source Church welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. You may be seated. So let's get, I want to em, em, embellish, is that the word, on the thing? So the cops are there. They're like, oh, you look a little taller on television. I said, yes. Yeah. So I heard Lieutenant say, uh-oh, bring in the canine, because dog the bounty hunter's here. We better catch this guy. Uh, this, whoa, dear Lord, is that unbelievable? It's kind of unbelievable, but it's believable. So I would like you formally, is that the word, to introduce my new wife. We're married September 2nd, last year, Francie Patrice Chapman. Thank you so much. And I'm a name dropper, okay? And the main name I drop is Jesus, but I'm a name dropping, Jesus dropping, half Chiricahua Apache Christian. <laughs> So should I start? Um, no. You want to start? Okay. <laughs> Not. Well, first I just you want to say. Now I have to stand okay. for a minute. The anointing is. I was going to pray. The anointing in. It's well, already here. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say that we are so honored to be here. Uh, for us to have been able to spend this time with you guys has just been amazing and so blessed. Thank you so much for having us. And we are just so excited to share um, what God has done in our lives. And when Dog and I were at the lowest point in our life, uh, God literally picked us up from the ashes and brought us together in the most powerful way. So we're, we're just really excited to share what God has done in our lives and how there is nothing beyond his reach. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through or what you've been through or the hurt or that you have in your life, there is nothing beyond his reach. And so we're just so excited to be here with you guys today. Thank you so much for Thank having you. us. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do you want to pray? You want to pray? Go. go. You go, yeah? baby. Okay. Lord, we love you. Oh, we love you, Lord. I know that every single person that's sitting in every one of these seats have been brought here for a purpose, for a reason. There's something that they need to hear or know or experience from you today. And we all know that just one word, one word, one touch from you can change everything. And so I ask that the Holy Spirit would just fall in this place and that our ears and our hearts and our minds would be open to what you have for, for everyone here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You start or I start? <laughs> I'm so... I'm so... You can start if you want to. I don't know if I can. <laughs> so, as probably a lot of people know, in June, three years ago, Beth passed away. In December, the December from before that, Mr. Bob passed away. We were both widows. So... First year, I was kind of making it. And then one night, I'm like, this is it. I've been, I've had a mate since I was 15 years old. And I'm one of those men that need a mate, a woman. Woman. <laughs> so one day, I was done. And I said, listen, Lord, I got out, I moved from Hawaii to Colorado. Ugh. It was snowing, I hadn't been in the snow in 24 years. I pulled that SUV over, I drew a circle, I don't know why I did all this, well I know now, around that SUV with my boot in the snow and I said, dear God in heaven, this is sacred ground. 
I pulled way over so nobody would hit me without an emergency flasher on, turned my dome light off, and I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, this may sound bad, but I need a woman. And I felt bad about saying that. Kinda. <laughs> you know, and not just for one thing, but for another. I needed a partner and a friend and a prayer partner. So I said, you know what I'll do? I'll go to Genesis where Adam met Eve. And however that happened, which I thought I knew, right? I've raised assembly God my whole life. I said, I'm going to copy that exactly. And then put God in a bind where he's got to do it. Because if he did it for Adam, he'll do it for me. So on the way there, still kind of guilty, looking through Adam and Eve and my phone, I saw this scripture that said, and God does not expect a man to be alone. Whoa, I thought, wait a minute, this ain't so perverted. <laughs> you said that, that you don't expect me to be alone? Really? I can ask you for a woman? He didn't say nothing, so I start praying more. God, okay, Lord, in the name of Jesus, really? So I, my faith started to build. Oh, this is okay to say. Is it okay to pray for money? Yeah, well, Jesus had a treasure. The rat. He must have had some kind of money. What do you need a treasure for? So once you realize that God don't care if you have money above, above all things, the Bible says, all things that I wish you would prosper and be in good health. <laughs> when we start realizing that, then we're faithfully, we can ask God, we need some money. Right? So I saw that God want, it was okay for me to ask. So I go to the Adam and Eve part. I <laughs> should know exactly where it's at, but I don't. So it's the end of Genesis or something through Genesis. And I see, now I'm thinking this, okay? Adam is asleep, naming all those animals, two by two, boy and girl. Thinking, man, where's my girl? Not. Goes to sleep, God wakes him up, or he rolls over, his ribs sore a little bit. Instead of the bottom of his heel, he took you from the rib, right? That's all I've ever heard. And he wakes up and says, whoa, look at there. That's not how it happened. How many know exactly how it happened? Thank you for lying. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens, the Bible says, is Adam's sound asleep. God wakes him up. Hey, brother. Hey. Wakey, wakey. So the I said, hey, wake up now, son. I got something for you. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you this is how it happened. What? He says, I want you to come over here and look. And this is my part. There's a tree and there's a rock. And God's like, as she walked through the sunlight, reflected off her skin, pure naked as a jaybird, and Adam said, whoa, man. <laughs> God said, that's a good name for a woman. <laughs> hey, this is real stuff. <laughs> so I went, oh, no. You mean that you brought Adam Eve? I'm dropping out at Christian.com right now. <laughs> No, I didn't get that far. <laughs> they wouldn't accept me anyway. <laughs> so I said, okay then. Here's what I want. I don't care what tribe she's from. My mom used to, I sang red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. So I said, I don't care what color they are. I want her taller than me though. I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I said that. You were prophesying over yourself. Oh. <laughs> and I said, I want her fluent in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want her in tongues. 
I want to be able to let her lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I want her to be my equal. I want her to be able to sing. I want to watch her cry. I want to, Lord, please, I want her so bad to be with you. I need a woman, but it's got to be a Christian. Now, believe it or not, Dog the Bounty Hunter, 20 some years on TV, there was maybe a small line of them waiting, but they wasn't no Christians. <laughs> Did I say that right, preacher? Okay. <laughs> some were demon possessed. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> so I said, Lord, please, this is what I need, please, in Jesus' name. And then I did it. <clears throat> when I got named dog, it was by a motorcycle club president when I was 16 years old. He said, you talk about like we'd be riding our choppers in Phoenix or California. We were nationwide. And the lightning would be in the rain, and these guys would flip God the bird. And I'd back off. What's the matter? I ain't riding next to you right now. Why? Well, I said, God, I'm going to strike you dead, bro. What are you doing? And then we went to, to New Mexico where the, all these uh, waters were, where all these girls swam naked, right? And then they started eating this kind of food. I'm like, listen, we got to say the blessing. Man, this stuff's poison. So all the time I talked about God, all the time I always have. Seems like when you sin a little bit, how do you become a complete sinner? Is there such a thing? Can you really do that? I was close to the edge, but I always talked about God. So the president of my club came in and he said, I was 15 years old. My ID said I was 19. He said, you know what? We had a guy named Preacher, okay, who was a jerk. We had another guy named John the Baptist. He rode his Harley through water all the time. And he said, you know what? You're always loyal. You show up to every single fight. Because when there was a fight, I got a call. I was the first one at Taco Bell ready to throw down. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to name you Dog. Loyalty, man's best friend. I was like, that sounds good. And he goes, and you know what, Dog? That's God spelled backwards. <laughs> Ooh, I thought, holy roller. So I told God, is anybody else that you know got a nickname like this who's named after you? Is anybody else you know been able to say in Jesus name, amen? You know how hard I fought for that on national television, every show? Amy called me one time and said, let me tell you something. We got to do a revamp on that show. You got to do an ad to it. What? He goes, you forgot to pray. What? Really? So we did a revamp. I prayed, said the pray. You dressed the same clothes you were in. We did that. Boom. They started saying it. When I first started, I said, can I say in Jesus' name? They go, oh, we're, doing, we're not sure. I go, well, can I try? Yeah. So our first show, numbers outstanding. The lady called me and she goes, we don't care whose name you say. We want you to pray, doggy. Whatever you're doing works. I said, Lord, I started that. I'm the one that, you know, usually they go and, and they, okay, amen, because they didn't, couldn't say Jesus. Nah, I said, that's a game breaker. Mama said, you don't say in the name of Jesus, your prayer bounces right off the roof. <laughs> yeah, you got to ask everything in his name. They let me do it. So I reminded the Lord of that. <clears throat> Number one, my nickname is you. Number two, I entered Jesus' name on national television. I said, do you know how many guys throwing up on me, Lord? You know how I beat down, Lord? <laughs> you know how many guys I put in the back of that car and said, right now I'm going to beat you so bad. You better say a prayer with me, buddy. <laughs> I did. There's a few of them I had to make them love Jesus, and they're still doing it. I, we were famous for that backseat ride. I had guys tell me I knew for sure. The guy told me today, oh my God, I knew something was going to happen, dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did, son, didn't you? Yes. So I said, Lord, you know how many guys threw up on me? I didn't get paid extra. I thought they were going to cut it. You know, the Christians, well, he's throwing his pearls before the swine. 
Oh, well, I'm doing it anyway. In Nashville, I'm telling them. I said, Lord, look at all the stuff. Am I okay? Ready? I'm almost, I'm almost done. I said, I said, look at all the stuff that I did. Now, Lord, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm, I'm cashing in my chips. Lord, I need a woman, and I need a Christian, please. And I drove home. Go ahead, Francie. <laughs> in 2015, uh, my husband, Bob, was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. It's a blood cancer that grows in your bone marrow. We did a bone marrow transplant and six trial drugs that all stopped working. And Bob went home to be with the Lord on December 30th of 2018, uh, seven months before dog lost Beth. And I, uh, I, I was clinging to God with everything that I had inside of me because all I wanted to do was die. I wanted to pull the car in the garage and let it run and I wanted to go home. I begged God for three months straight to take me home. And even in the middle of that time where I was begging him to take me home, he also had come so close to me in a way that I had never experienced him before, that it was starting to change me. And in my grief, I didn't realize it, but he was changing me. And in the midst of me begging him, him to take me home, I got a letter in the mail. And it was addressed to me, and in the return address, it said, Bob Frain, and underneath it, it said, Heaven. And his brother uh, sent them to me. There were six letters in all, and every single letter that Bob wrote to me was filled with words from heaven. He had a foot and a half in heaven when he wrote them. And every single letter was filled with, God has a plan for your life. This is not the end. Put your crown on, lift your chin up. You're the daughter to the most high king. So go chase what he has for you. Be all in for Jesus. He's your strong tower. He's everything that you need. And while those letters would break my heart every time I read them, they also helped me stand up. And then God started speaking to me. You already have everything inside you that you need. I've already given you everything that you need to get up. So get up, Francie. Get up. Come and get what I have for you. I have a plan for your life that is beyond me bringing Bob home. This isn't the end of your life. And I want you to rise up and I want you to come and get what I have for you. So it took everything that I had inside of me. And every day I would say over and over, I don't care how I feel inside, I'm chasing after you. I don't care how bad my heart hurts. I don't care how much pain I'm in right now. I am not going to stop chasing after you. And I did that every single day for six months. I have a friend in Arizona who has a ministry. And she asked me to come down and help me start to get my heart healed and to soak and to be with her. So I go down to Arizona with a friend of mine and we're inside the hotel and she's looking up worship music on YouTube and she says to me, oh my gosh, Beth Chapman just passed away from cancer two days ago. And I start crying because even the word cancer makes me start crying. And after a few minutes and I realized I'm crying over someone who I don't know, who is Beth Chapman? <laughs> And she says, what? And I said, who's Beth Chapman? And she goes, Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife. And I'm like, okay, who's that? Let, let me, 
say Francie Hillary. Oh, hello. Francie is a rancher. <laughs> really. Francie's a country girl. <laughs> yeah, they have cattle. They raised a, a, a pig named Porkchop and shot it and ate it. <laughs> no, really, she does this. So, even don't you got cable or free? So you don't know who that. She didn't know who I was. I'm like, eh. <laughs> and when she says how you worship, Francie's still Katie Souza. She was at a, I could tell, I say, a Holy Ghost convention. You know, she was at the convention with Katie. She's on the ground face first. Yes. That's how she does. And she wails and prays and, oh, so they're doing all that together, right? Okay. Go on. <laughs> Sorry. She doesn't so. it's, it's okay. So she says, do you live under a rock? How do you not know who Dog the Bounty Hunter is? I'm like, I'm so sorry, but who has a name like that? <laughs> she pulls up a picture of Dog and Beth, and she holds it right up to my face. And I'm like, yep, I have no idea who that is, and that guy needs a haircut. <laughs> Which I don't think that anymore. I love your hair. <laughs> so... Uh, we go on about our day, and the next morning I'm in the bathroom, and she comes in, and she says, I need to tell you something. And I'm like, okay. And she goes, no, I really need you to hear me, and I need you to keep your, your mind open to what I have to say. And I'm like, okay, bring it on. Come on. She says, well, God gave me a vision, and I saw us driving in a black limo, and we were all dressed up. And we pull up to a curb, and the door opens, and a hand reaches in and pulls you out. And you step out of the car, and Dog the Bounty Hunter's standing there. And then you guys walk in to this event, and there's thousands of people there. And I really think that God's going to use you guys to change lives and to do something amazing for the kingdom together. And I'm like, are you nuts? What's wrong with you? Your God antennas are twisted, and no, I don't want to hear anymore. So the whole rest of the week that we're in Arizona, she continues to give me bits and pieces of this prophecy and this vision that God shows her about Dog the Bounty Hunter. And while all week I keep telling her, stop it. Stop talking about that. And that's not going to happen. I have no idea who that is. So just stop it. So I would never, ever <laughs> look at that freak. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's a rancher. No, I, I did not think that. But I also told everyone I'm never getting married again. I'm never giving my heart to anybody again. My heart belongs to the Lord. I've been on my face for almost a year, and my life belongs to him, and I've said yes to him, but I have a plan of what that yes looks like, and it doesn't include anybody but God. To be a missionary, she had all these plans. <laughs> so, let's go, okay, so. Two months later. Two months later. What, where you jump? I don't know where you went. Two months later. <laughs> two months later, I'm home. Oh, the funeral. From, so. No, two months, two months later, I'm home from, I'd been home from Arizona, and I don't shut Bob's phone off yet. And my grandson has taken over his papa's phone, and there's three messages on the phone. And... I erase the first two. I don't even listen to them. And this next message starts playing out loud on the speaker. And I'm trying to shut the message off. And I'm trying to make it stop, but it won't. And I hear the guy say, this is Doug Chapman. And I'm looking for Bob. And my next door neighbor, Carlos, and I thought, oh, Carlos was a client of Bob's. And he, must, he doesn't realize Bob passed away. So I probably should call this guy back. So from Bob's phone, I call back, and I hear this guy answer. Hello. No. Okay. She goes like this. 
So I tell, I go, I have two funerals for Beth. One in Hawaii, one in Colorado. So I do the one in Hawaii first. I do the one in Colorado next. Now, she's in Arizona. I'm in Hawaii, right? I live there. But I come to Colorado to do it because Beth was born there. So I live in Colorado, you too. You live in Colorado, yeah. too. So my driveway is all terrible. And so I tell my neighbor next door, Carlos, who is the excavator? Who does that? It's got a big tractor can fix my driveway because all these people are coming up with flowers and, you know, breaking their mufflers off in their cars and driving up. And, yeah, it was terrible. So he goes, Bob Frayne does all the work around here. He's the number one top guy. He's a Christian guy. And I'm like, oh, good, a Christian ain't going to rob me. And, you know, no, usually. And so, uh, <laughs> sorry. So I call and say, hi, this is Doug Chapman. Would you call? Okay, go ahead. And so, she so. Had, wait. So sometimes, <laughs> so we do the same thing you guys do it. <laughs> You knew that was my cue to say that. We practice so, this at home, but you see how well it works. <laughs> well, sometimes we go to pick up food. They go, can we have a name and a number, please? You know, do you call? And I go, yeah, dog, Chapman, phone number, right? So we walk in still today and on the sack, you it know, for the, Doug. it says Doug. And we look at each other and kiss, because that's just the Lord teasing us. So she goes, hi, is Doug there? And so I'm used to that word, right? And I see it's a 720 number. It's a local number from there. My caller ID on my phone. So I answer because I go, it might be the neighbor or something. Hi, is Doug there? And I, hello, is Doug there? Yeah, go ahead. What do you need? Right? And so go ahead. So. Is it okay, ma'am? You all right? Ma'am? You all right? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, you want us to wait till you get back? They're speakers. I know of my preacher. You got speakers in the ladies' room. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So the guy answers and says, Hello. Is Doug there? Who's this? I'm like, Oh, I knew I shouldn't have called back. <laughs> <laughs> I love so I woman. say, uh, This is Francie. You left a message for my husband, Bob. And um, he said, Yes, Carlos gave me his number. And I said, well, I'm really sorry, Doug, but Bob passed away a few months ago of cancer. And the guy starts bawling. And I'm like, who the crap is Doug? Why is he crying over Bob like this? <laughs> All of a sudden, I hear the guy take a deep breath, and he goes, my name's not Doug. It's Dog, the bounty hunter. So, and uh, I just lost my wife to cancer a few months ago. So I start bawling because everything that Paige said to me in Arizona is playing like a movie in my mind. And I'm like, Lord, what is happening right now? No, and I'm thinking, I go, hi, this, my, I start crying because cancer, but you know, she said, I lost my husband eight months ago or something. Mm -hmm. And she says it, I'm broke, right? I'm like fresh out of that. So I start crying, and then I go, this is Dog the Bounty Hunter, and this happens too. Click. When I, you know, <laughs> sometimes I go, hi, this is Dog the Bounty Hunter. Click. Uh-oh. So I real, you know, so she, I'm like, hello? Hello? Excuse me, ma'am, are you there? Hello? Because she's like, ooh. Because the Holy Spirit is getting a hold of my Joan of Arc right then. <laughs> and she's feeling that, right? And, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so we end up having this two... I'm shaking all over in my body right now. <laughs> we have I've a two-hour so conversation <laughs> about what we both had gone through and walked through and how hard it was. Don't tell them and... what I said because it's all felonies. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true, too. So... Um, to make no. me cry. No. Because they, you know, the cancer and uh, something else worked, uh, the form of THC, right? And all of a sudden she started gaining weight. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute. And the doctor, I'm like, she was like 107 pounds. Now she's 132. Why didn't you tell me about this with chemo radiate? Oh, I'm sorry, but all we went to school for is chemo and radiation. Oh, you didn't go to school to cure people of cancer? Yes, 
Hey. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I could let loose with her because she understood. And all of a sudden, I, cut, I saw this sign in my mind that said, watch it, widow. Because you know what the Bible says about widows and children <laughs> in the neck and you cast into the sea. So any kind of thought about this is the woman I prayed for was not there. <laughs> because I am never going after any kind of widow, I thought. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So we have this conversation and... Uh, I just was speaking into him about what God had been speaking into me. Your life's not over. You can't give up. You have to get back up. Now, I'm sure your wife would want you to. God has a plan for your life. You have to stand up. You have to get back up. And so, so we hang up the phone. He, uh, or he asked me, can I, can I call you again? Maybe we could have some coffee. I'm like, yeah, sure. And so we hang up, and I thought, okay, cool. That was the prophecy. I was supposed to speak that into him. Well, now here's... And now I can move on. And here's, <laughs> here's what she thought. You know, your wife would like you to do that. You know, Beth. So we go in the le two weeks before she passes. We don't know she's passing, right? She was here. The, the doctor says, this little pill you can take, you could go out on the ocean in a boat, and go moi moi. Moi moi means go sleep. And I'm like, uh, really? And then you won't melt, and then you won't suck for air and yeah. choke and die, right? Yeah. So she's like, really? It's, and I, she goes, should I go? It's up to you, Beth. I'm not good Lord, you know. I don't even know today what I'd do, right? So she tells the doctor, okay, I'll take two. And the doctor's like, honey, all you need is one. And she goes, well, big daddy needs one too. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so no, she wouldn't have expected me to. No, okay. I don't think so. so. Sorry. I think she was hurting. Yeah. She wanted to take me with, she wanted, she wanted me to go with her. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. So seven months goes by and we don't talk to each other again. Seven months now. Seven <laughs> months. Be sure we get that part. How do you say the Lord works in slow, sometime ways? Well, the truth is, is that we both were still grieving, and we both were still healing, and God was doing things in us during those seven months right. uh, to prepare us for where he was taking us, and there. There was work that needed to be done still. So seven months later, uh, I, I had only told four people that I talked to him on the phone. And one of those four was uh, also a widow. She lost her husband to cancer, and I had been walking alongside her. So one morning, she calls me at 4 a.m., and she's, oh, my gosh, you're going to freak out. And so I'm sleeping, and I'm automatically I say, do you want me to come and pick you up? Because I had done that before, several times. And she keeps saying, no, this is about you. So I jump out of bed to try to figure out what she's talking about. And she says, I was watching Bethel Music at two this morning and a Dog the Bounty Hunter video popped down on my feet. And I thought, Bethel Music and Dog the Bounty Hunter? No way. I have to watch this. That long-haired guy. <laughs> so she watches He's in California on Fox News doing an interview, and she says, I'm sending you the video. Go to four minutes and 30 seconds and start watching from there. So I do, and the news interviewer says, so, dog, you're about eight months into your grieving process, and I just, you help so many people, and I just feel like this is really going to be an extension of, of what you're doing and the, and the people that you're helping. And he says, well, Jerry, it's so funny that you say that, because I called this dirt guy Bob. <laughs> and his wife, Francie, called me back. And we had this really amazing conversation. And I think we really helped each other. And I think God's going to use us together somehow. 
and we're going and to. And I start bawling. And I don't even realize I say it till I heard it. <laughs> you talk about God putting words in your mouth. Is that scriptural? <laughs> yes. Uh, that donkey talk, didn't he? So I'm like, I can't believe I said that. I actually said, I met this dirt guy, lady, and we got along really good, and I think we're going to some way change the world. I was like, I said that. So you heard that, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody, now did I say my, when I draw the circle, before that or after? It was after that. Oh, so I don't, let's go, I just had to talk first. I hadn't drawn the circle and pulled over yet, okay? We just got hooked up. She's a widow. You know, I'm like, get back. Like a vampire, do not touch her. No, right? I'm like, uh-uh. So, okay, go. Sorry. So then my four friends are, you have to call him now. And I'm like, nope. I'm not letting Satan distract me. Satan. Now it's <laughs> Satan. I am not letting Satan distract me from my path. Now it's long-haired Satan. <laughs> Francie Chapman, what you doing? <laughs> Cake, I'm sorry. I have a plan for my life, and I'm going to be a missionary, and my whole life is going to be live for the Lord, and I'm going to Hawaii, and I'm going to go to the YMWAM Mission School. <laughs> well, I had gone on a mission, and... It was a short mission. It was to get my feet wet. It was four days. I spread some of Bob's ashes on that mission. And I said yes to the Lord. And i giving you my life. I'm going to give you everything. And so what do you do when you give the Lord everything? You go to be a missionary. So that was my plan. And Without a backpack. <laughs> and so... I spread Bob's ashes, I get on the bus, I get in the back, and I start bawling my eyes out because I'm still grieving, and I have this backpack on, and I have my earphones on, and I'm listening to worship, and I'm like, Lord, I know I said yes to you, but this sucks. I don't want to be a missionary. I need my shoes. I don't want to live out of a backpack, but I've already told you yes. So I'll keep going and I'll keep doing it. So the girls are telling me, you have to call him. You have to call him. I'm like, nope. I'm not letting Satan distract me from where I'm there going. you are Satan again. <laughs> so a week goes by and the Lord says to me, you're going to call him and you're going to do it today. And I'm like, mm, really? I don't want to. Yes. You're going to call him, and you're going to do it today. So I write this, you know, so after I had talked to him the first time, the Lord told me, I don't want you to look him up. I don't want you to read anything about him. I don't want you to go on the internet. I don't want you to watch his shows. I don't want you to do anything. I just want you to keep your eyes on me. And so I didn't. I didn't know anything about him. I just knew that he had a TV show, and my girlfriend told me, you know, you have to have watched it. He beats the crap out of people, and then he puts them in the back seat and pours Jesus down their throat and gives them a cigarette. Oh, oh, oh. I thought, well, that's pretty cool, but the Lord said not to watch it, so I'm not. So I didn't know anything about him, and... So I think, okay, I'm going to send him a text message. I'm not going to call. That's sort of being obedient. <laughs> but he probably has all these, you know, women chasing after him, and he's a celebrity and all this oh. stuff. And so I, I type out this whole text about how I don't know you. I've never watched your show. I definitely don't want to date you, but... We had this conversation about how there's no coincidences in God's kingdom. And I believe that with all my heart. So I think for some reason we're supposed to meet. So I takes me forever and I finally send the text message through. Well, the moment that I sent that text message 
was the moment that he was in the SUV and he had drawn the circle around his SUV. Yeah, this is where it gets anointing now. Letting God have it about how much he was hurting and what he was going through. So I had just went to the hospital. They said, you have cancer of the throat, head. I'm like, thanks, Beth. You need me there that bad? And so I go to the hospital, go to the doctor, get an operation. They go, you don't have cancer. It's some kind of like mole thing us Indians get. We're going to take it off. It's okay. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. I thought, right? So I'm all happy that that. So I go out. I park my car at the hospital. Two cars in the parking lot. I come out. There's 380. 400. I'm like, where is my car? I call security. Finally, after walking in the snow, you know that... One thing where you use this hair blows, you know, brother, long hair. Your hair blows back like that. I got spray in mine. It looks like the demon in the snow, Arr, right? So I'm like, man, this is not cool. So I go, security, they bring the car up. Here's your car. Oh, thank you guys very much. You didn't have to do that. You could have just found it, aisle six, row seven. And I thought, good. So I get in the car, drive home, because Michael Jackson, I don't get nothing stronger than aspirin. So, and it's pounding the stitches. I'm like, okay, Jesus, name, okay, I can hang with this. I just get ready to get home. It's a long drive. There's a radio in the car, hand radio. Security left the radio. I got to drive all the way back and give the guy the radio. I can't wait till tomorrow because I know he's probably going to get fired, and he did me right. So I go all the way back, give him the radio. That's when my patience was done you know, still, we still get out of a shopping center, and I go, Francie, where we park? Over this way, I think. Beep, beep. Oh, that's right. You got the trigger now. You know, I need a woman. I need a friend. I need a partner, man. I don't like boys. I have very few boyfriends. <laughs> Unless they're pastors or, you know, Christians, right? Really, I don't. So I get a text over the thing. I got the Frankenstein thing around my head. And it's that lady, oh, it's the Francy lady. I couldn't even think of her name. Fancy Francy. I use association to remember. So, uh, Fancy Francy, something about coffee. I, real, I still to this day huh, have not read it. No, I don't want to read it yet. So, I call her and go, listen, you want to meet for coffee? I don't drink coffee but in the morning, but she drinks it all day, right? She's a rancher. And so she's like, sure, we'll meet. How about the Castle Rock Cafe, right? Because it's cool. I mean, you don't take a date there, right? She's like, okay. So she walks in. She's got cowgirl boots on, you know, tucked down in. And I'm like, oh, good, right? Nothing extraordinary. Because, again, I'm not thinking for a mate. I'm just thinking for a friend that knocked. She starts talking about the Holy Ghost and Jesus and forgiveness, talking me out of a felony, right? So, yeah, I'm going to hook up, but they're like a parole officer, kind of, right? No, really, because I'm upset, man. So we walk in. She, Her hands, I look at her hands. My mother was my best friend I ever had in my life. And she prayed for me every, every day. And she had long fingers. She played the piano. She's, I'm the fifth generation of saints. All my grannies before me were pastors. So I looked at her hands, and I saw the hands, long fingers, and then I went, wow. And then I'm like, oh, hands like your mom, so for sure she's safe. <laughs> right? Well, let me just say, though, yeah. that I didn't know what to expect when I got there, and I've read nothing, looked at nothing. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for the, for the guy who beats everybody up, Right? And uh, gives him a backseat ride. I'm waiting for that guy. And so he stands up when I get there. And he shakes my hand. And as soon as he touched my hand, God gave me a download of his heart. And it took everything that I had not to start crying at that moment right in front of him. Really? Yes. <laughs> Because God showed me what an amazing warrior man you are. You have a heart after his own heart. <laughs> that you love the Lord. Yes, I do. 
really? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Look out there. <laughs> I love you. I love you, woman. So, so after we meet, right? She says, what are you doing? I got this guy I'm going after. Bond's 300 grand. Last bond Beth wrote. You don't catch the guy, you pay 300 grand. Uh, should I say it in public what Beth said to me? About no. Him? No. So, I was broke. Can you know me say it? You just did. Oh. So Beth calls me before she died and said, well, no. 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 So anyway, I was broke. Bonds 300 grand. Oh, no. You don't pay it? It's almost, then we got bonds when you're there in the service. You almost go to jail. You better pay it. So this guy is one of the worst I've ever met. Okay, his name's Lawhead. Can you believe that? So he jumps, runs, jumps bail on October 28th, her birthday. Her birthday, he jumps bail. Com really good criminal. Beth, why'd you write that? We needed the money. Well, 10% of 300 grand is, is uh, 30,000. How much did you get? Four grand? Four grand? He'll pay? No. So, through, I'm so far in debt on this guy, right? So, I tell Francie the story. So, this guy, he carves my name on the brass of his bullet. And he starts telling me, he said, yeah, you almost got me. You missed me by 10 minutes. And I said, lawhead, I can make 3,000 mistakes you got to make one. And I mean, we, so I went after I met Francie. What are you doing? I'm going to chase this guy. Well, I'll pray you catch him. I'm like, oh God, yes. <laughs> Three, 300,000 prayers, lady. No, really? Because I know that's how I catch people, right? Is discernment and the Lord. 10,000 I've arrested in 40 years and 9,998 of them have been Jesus. No, I'm telling you. So, She's praying. I go out of town. All of a sudden, oh, my, Leland's with me, and we get ready to go. We miss him by five minutes. Leland says, Dad, this guy's going to trying to kill you. And I go, and Leland's standing by the door just so I get ready to boot this one door in. And all of a sudden, the scripture where, who was it that was scared to go through the town? And he said, oh, Lord, open his eyes. And round about the camp stood angels. Who was that, Pastor? Elisha. Oh, it's one of my favorite scriptures, right? My favorite stories. And so uh, Leland said, Dad, are we going in? And I'm like, oh, Lord, open his eyes. <laughs> Leland starts snorting, right? I said, son, you get behind your daddy, right? Boom, we boot the door. He gets out the back five minutes before I boot the door. I go home and she's, I go to the hotel or the Airbnb in L.A., and there's this scripture on my phone about Elisha and Op it, the, I go, wait a minute. How does this widow know this stuff? So all this <laughs> time that he's gone, it ended up being like five weeks. Yeah. And God starts downloading all these scriptures that don't mean anything to me. But they were everything that he needed Every at the time. Single so thing. I just keep sending them to him. And then we start having these phone conversations on the phone. And they get longer and longer. And we quickly got, I felt like God was collapsing time in that five weeks because we really became close over the phone in this really cool friendship. And we started just talking all night long. We'd realize, all of a sudden realize it was four or five o'clock in the morning. So five weeks later, six weeks later, you come back. I come back without lawhead. He's, I knew you weren't going to catch him, though. The Lord told me. Yeah, that. you told me that. And I'm like, ma'am, lady, please watch your confession. It's the hardest. <laughs> you know, the hardest thing on your mouth to control, man, is not what we think. It's the tongue. <laughs> And I'm like, man, lady, come on. You know, don't say that. Well, I'm just telling you what the Lord showed me. Oh, great. Right? And I didn't catch him, but caught him later, though. <laughs> and so, now, here's you where... You come back. This is where... This is where it gets absolutely a miracle. Not a circumstance. It Was it a circumstance we pull up today with the pastor and some guy stealing his truck? 
Was no. it a circumstance that we look across the street, you ought to see Mrs. Pastor Ben. She jumped quicker than I did. <laughs> oh, don't let her kid you. She's like, let's go get him, dog, okay? <laughs> Is that right? Woo! No, she's acted all like, oh, it was dog. Wait a minute, she was out the door the first, and I was. So, anyway, is that a, is that, that is a, not a circumstance. The cops are like, we better catch him right now, dog. The bounty hunter's here. Oh, my God, we're going to get embarrassed on TMZ. <laughs> so. You come back into town, and he asks me on a date. No, well, I didn't say date. <laughs> he asked said, me on a date. You know, I just thought of this, too. This is why I did I'm like, that. no. Here's why I did this. I just thought of this, and this was going to be Christian-ish. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, the Spirit of God is here. Do you feel it, right? Do you feel this? It's going to drop really hard in a minute. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let's leave the physical completely out of it. You don't need that, even though you do, but you don't. But you need the companionship. That's what it is. It's not the physical. You're so cute. Is that the Christian way to say that? Yeah, you're so cute. That's true, though. It really, I I've taken this right now. Why did I ever go out with the, the widow? Friendship. It was the friendship yeah. and the, you know, a mama's baby. We were baby. both grieving. Yeah, a also. mama's boy. It was the girl meets man, boy. It was that. Yes, it's a man boy. Yeah. I, what'd you say? Yes, it's a man boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. She smelled like a girl instead of aqua velva. <laughs> or her karate kid or whatever it's called. So I thought, it, you know what? That's what it is. It's not, it's not the physical. It's the girl part. So then I said to you. Do you want to go on a date? I didn't say the word date. I said, would you like to go somewhere to the movie? No. Yes, she did. And so I went through all the movies. Da, 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 da. No. I found the perfect movie, <laughs> This Jermungi. girl belongs to Jesus. No. No, Jermungi. No. My friend Dwayne the Rock is there. No. Not too much cussing in it. And I thought, so she goes. No. I, <laughs> <laughs> you want, are you lying in church? <laughs> she goes, no, but you, if you want to go to church, because she goes something like, I might go see a movie if you go to church at me. Now, we talked That's about right. the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we talked about, but I didn't say right out, what religion are you, lady? Right? And I knew she believed in speaking in tongues of that, so then I did it. You want to go to church, I said? If you go to church with me, maybe I'll, then I might go. Oh, great. That's the way the Lord's getting me back in church. No, I had to no. vet you. In front of my spiritual mom and my homies and my generals. Did so you? you had to go there first. And so I yes. figure in my mind, oh, tricky, tricky Jesus. <laughs> this is how you're getting me back in the church. And that's what's wrong. I quit going. I'm on the phone to my brother Tim Story. And I'm on the phone to Copel Kenneth Copeland. And I'm on the phone to brother and sister. But I ain't going Nope. Okay, she tricked me into it. Now, what, you're, what, ma'am? We're Penny, I'm Pentecostal. I go, are you the rattlesnake Pentecostal or the other one? <laughs> and she's a rancher. Rattlesnake? Oh, uh, never mind. But you know, you guys know there is a rattlesnake Pentecostal, right? <laughs> I'd never been there. And so... She said, no, Pentecost. I go, well, sure, I'll go. Because I'm, I'm like, felt comfortable, right? So she tells everybody, can I keep going? Sure. So she tells everybody at the church, We're don't. Out of time, so it's it. okay, we'll go over. We'll go. <laughs> Is it okay? When he goes like that, you got to cut. When, uh, so, so let me say this part. Okay. So a friend of mine who's part of IHOP in Kansas City comes to Colorado once a month, and, and he does this amazing Friday night fire service. It's so powerful. And the Holy Spirit always shows up. And so, you know, I thought, okay, might as well be all in, so let's take him to that. Oh, this and is the first time I heard that. <laughs> Holy Ghost trickery. That's right. 
That's right. That is, is this true? Yes. So it's okay to trick, isn't it? I guess it works on me. <laughs> it's called what? Testing. Oh, you women. <laughs> What's so in that group I tell you got? <laughs> I tell everybody. You know, they all know that I've met him now, and that they he's, know me that you don't. Yes, so that he's coming, and so everyone's agreed to. Um, you know, I'm like, just let's just let him be here and not do the whole you know thing with the pictures and can no, I meet I, you can I shake your hand so let's let's just let him be here so everybody agrees to this because Nikki Cruz you know, but like God I, had a different plan I went to Nikki's and he's taught he taught me don't do pictures in church dog it ain't good I said you're right it's like Jesus did the temple it's his father's house don't be doing selfies in church right so uh, that was good. I said, I don't do pictures in church and all that. And she's like, no, no, no. So she told everybody to leave him alone. So I go in there. I walk up, stand outside is where I stand. And she's in the third row or something, right? I'm like, oh, dear God. Like my mother, she gets in the front row where the power is. <laughs> right? So I try hey, to... Hey, I want to be as close to the altar and worship <laughs> as humanly possible. Well, you... <laughs> Sorry, you guys in the back out there. No. So uh, I go, I grab her hand like we're standing together. She flicks my hand off. <laughs> and I'm like, good. It was just flesh overtook the spirit. It's all right. I'm all right. Ah, it's all right because I don't like her anyway. <laughs> right? So we're there praising here like worship, right? All of a sudden, a gift of tongue com tongues comes out. From the pastor. From the pastor. From the pastor. And he says, show me the seat of the eye. And I go, no, not show me the seat of the eye. <laughs> oh, let's show me the seat of the eye. I tell her, lady, that's why I call her lady. That's my name in Holy Ghost words. <laughs> what? I go, my mama pray every day for me. And I go to my sisters, what is mom praying about? And they, my sisters just, one is in heaven and one will tell you today, show me the seat that the eye is Dwayne Lee in Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and I said, lady, that's my name in Holy Ghost. And I'm like, no. She goes, no, it's okay. It's okay. They promised. <laughs> and the pastor's like blasting the Holy Spirit. He's back and forth, right? And all of a sudden he stops and he starts going like this. <laughs> and he's a big old tall white boy. Mm, mm. I'm like, oh, no. And he goes, dog, come up here. I'm like, oh, no, no. I'm waiting for him to go running out the door. Now, remember, but I'm he just, goes up. I'm just getting back into church after six months, okay? I was gone. So I'm going to say it. So I go up there because I know if I don't, Whew. literally all hell is going to break loose in my life. I don't know why I went. So I go walking up there, right? He's Holy like, Spirit. He's like in the spirit world looking at me, right? Starts walking to me. I'm going to say it, Francie. And I go, listen, Pastor. If you touch me and slay me in the spirit in front of all these people that I don't know, I'm going to whoop your okole. <laughs> but I didn't say the Hawaiian word. And he goes, some kid in the front row goes, did you hear what he just said to our pastor? He's going to whip his, oh, a, a, a. And, uh, and I go, Let, shut up, punk. I'm going to whoop you next. <laughs> no, because I'm freaked out that this guy would call me up there. Don't he know that I get it? <clears throat> he goes, I don't need to touch you to slay you in the spirit, dog. <laughs> Come on, preacher. So then I knew mercy, right? Where mercy is shown, mercy is given. So I go, Come on, man, please. Please. All right. So that I'm knowing, uh oh, there's an interpretation coming. There better be. And all of a sudden, my spiritual mom and her, I call them the generals, her group of women, 
um, surround him and lay hands on him, and they light him up. And all of a sudden, she, my spiritual mom starts saying, your whole life is about to change. The path that you have been on is not the path that God has for you. God is taking you in another direction. And what you asked me for is right in front of you. Did you hear this? You said the right words finally, dog. What you asked for, I'm going to give you, my son. I said, listen, I'm, I love going around the throne and whispering and dancing. Jesus, I need to fight. I want to fight demons when I get to heaven. It's okay. I love you. You died for me. But all those girls are going to be marching around. Us guys want to fight. I don't mean to be like that. I love you, Lord. But where's my sword? My battle. She goes, you are a warrior in God, my army. You ask me. It's in standing in front of you. I'm like, oh, my God. I look in front of me because I don't know what they're saying, really. Francie's got both hands raised high, and she does the Holy Ghost shuffle. She starts doing that right there, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> i never been in, can I say this right, Holy Ghost love. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I can't breathe. I'm like, oh my God. I said, Mother, behold thy son, Bobby, Bobby, look. And I grabbed her hand again, and she squeezed my hand. 13 days later, we got married. No. No. No, it was about 60. <laughs> and I thought, oh, dear Lord, God. And I thought, now, and of course, this is why we speak, but miracle after miracle, yes. not just widow, 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 Oh, the miracles, the fights, though. Whoa. So what the Lord showed me while he was up there, and uh, I wanted to crawl under the chair because <laughs> I was horrified that this was all happening. And the Lord was just like, just wait. Just watch what I'm about to do. And then what he also showed me while I was sitting in that chair is that the limo that my girlfriend had saw pulling up to the curb was the car of mourning. And when dog opened up the door and took my hand and pulled me out, God was pulling me out of mourning. And we were walking alongside each other out of mourning in a plan that God had for our lives that either one of us wanted nor expected but when you're willing to say yes to him, to position yourself in a way that says yes, and no matter what that looks like, I'll follow you. I'll go where you're taking me because, you know, truthfully, all the things that I've done on my own have been a mess. But I know that what you have for me is better than anything I could have ever, ever wished, dreamed, asked for. And if I would not have spent that year and a half on my face, getting healed, getting my soul healed, getting my heart right, dealing with things that were in my past, in my middle, in my present, being willing to grieve the way God was asking me to grieve, I wouldn't have been ready to step into his life. I wouldn't have been able to handle the barrage of things that came when we got together. You're never going to be Beth. You'll never fit her shoes. You'll never be who she was. That's exactly right, because I'm Francie. I'm not Beth. Nor do I want to be. That's not who I am in his life. We, we both, uh, we talk about Bob and Beth all the time. We don't ever try to put them in a box or behind a door like they weren't there. They were a big part of our life, and they're a big part of who, why we are who we are today. 
And that's never going to change. We don't ever want that to change. But both of us were willing to say yes to whatever God had for us and whatever that looked like. And so I know that there's people here today who have lost someone, who've had their heart broken, who've gone through trauma in your life and have been hurting and you don't know how to get past that. Thank you guys so much. You don't know how to get past that hurt or past that ache inside you that won't ever go away. So for us to come up and share that God brought us together in the most miraculous, amazing way when we least expected it, it's because we got low. We got on our knees and we said yes to him. And we said, whatever that looks like, we want you. Whatever that looks like in our life, we want it. I want you more than how bad I hurt. And in time, he started to take that away. And Dog and I were able to walk through our grief. We were able to help each other get back up. And our hearts started to heal because we allowed his glory and his presence to come in and do that. So what we're asking today is if your heart's hurting, if, if, you're, if you're struggling, come up here. Come up and let the Lord pour into your heart. Let him heal the pain. And whatever it is that you've gone through, your broken heart, your trauma, the depression, whatever that looks like for you, God wants to heal you. He wants to make your heart right. He wants you to be whole. The Bible says faith cometh by healing. You don't get nothing but with faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, reading. I used to think, boy, I got to read Genesis through Revelations to get faith. No, no, no. Hear that? This is the word of God. If Dog and Francie can get that and we hear that, we'll build your faith. Oh, we're running out of gas, kids. No, we're not, Dad. We're going to run out. No, we're not, kid. Hush up. We're going to make it. No, that's hope. That's faith. You hear how you, oh, we overcame the enemy by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You hear our testimony. You, this really happened. I would have never married a rancher. <laughs> Did I quench the spirit? I didn't mean to. <laughs> I, I would have never. And look at it. Do we match? Aww, Don't we? So Even the long hair, right? <laughs> one, one thing before we have a prayer. I tell her I've got 13 children. One's in heaven. I said, Frank, David was married eight times in the Bible. You know that? So I said, Francie, you make one baby with me. No. I go, Francie, you got to. I've got four wives. I've fed babies, all of them. Well, not me. <laughs> Last year, I get a call from the state of Colorado. They go, do you remember this girl when you were 15? She was 15. I go, I remember her. Well, let me tell you something. The new law is that you can find the babies now, can find the parents when they give them up for adoption. They said, Judge Gilliam wrote down here, the parent to this boy's name is Dwayne Chapman. He's 50 some years old. She goes, DNA right now. We took two swabs. I told Francie, we got us a baby. <laughs> his name is John Chapman. <laughs> yeah. He changed his name on my birthday this year. And God gave us a baby already <laughs> grown. He, she loves that because she don't like kids. I mean, she don't. No, hate I just don't want any more. <laughs> she don't. And like I love them. my grandkids. Yeah, the grandson you love. But God then get provided me my oldest son, and he is a little Christian big boy, right? He's my baby, and he owns his own tree trimming place. He's like lives in Ohio, right? God then said, now I give you each other. 
I give you a child. You know what he calls Francie? Hi, Mom. <laughs> Is that amazing? And his real mother, we're 15. And his real mother's still alive. It doesn't mind sharing with Francie. And did not know where he was either. You see what God has done? Open up the doors for us all over the United States, because I'm never going to Mexico again. They got a warrant for me there. <laughs> so, uh, I don't mean to do this during your altar call, because now I'll shush up. No, it's okay. So, it I once good. said, has anybody got any lost loved ones? Please come forward. The whole church stood up.